Hi folks, Mike the Car Guy here, and I'd like to share with you a conversation I had recently about using technology in the service drive at car dealerships and why I think that using technology is no longer just an exciting uh, aspect or an option. It's really required. It's, it's really the buy-in to sit at the table with today's modern customer. But before I do that, let me back up a little bit and kind of share, share with you why I'm so t passionate about texting. Uh, texting is not new, obviously. Texting has been around since uh, since the mid-90s. Nokia, uh, the phone company, actually was the one that really popularized sending text messages with your mobile phone. Uh, and by the 2000s, texting was, was, was blowing up. Everybody was texting. Back then, I wasn't good at texting because you had to use the, the letter keys and type it three different times to get you know the, the letter O, and I wasn't really fast, but uh, I, I sent texts myself. Everybody did. By 2007, more texts were being sent each month than phone calls being made. So that's 13 years ago. It's a long time that texting has been a, a factor of our lives. It's not even something we think about anymore. It's just the way it is. And too often in the car business, we don't necessarily think that our customers live in the same world as we do. We're sending texts, but we're not thinking that our customers may be sending texts as well. So we put customers in a, in a different category than, than we do. About 2013, I was uh, running the sales team and we were doing really well with uh, with texting, not the only one doing it, obviously. I mean, I, I'm not revolutionary in any manner, but I knew what other people that were successful were doing and I was adopting it to my team. My uh, The general manager at the, the dealership really didn't like the text. Um, he was really anti not having access to what was being said, what was being, being able to monitor what the salespeople were saying with the customers. And about that time, I, I discovered something uh, called Google Voice. Uh, it was a free service. I jumped on it myself, started really, really doing well with it. Myself, I'm better at typing on a keyboard than I am at texting, so it gave me the ability to send a text message from my keyboard on the PC. And what I could do is copy and paste the notes from the text right into the CRM. Satisfied my general manager, everybody was happy, so I got all the salespeople to jump into to Google, get their Google Voice numbers set up, and, and we were rocking. About a year or so later, heard about a company called uh, ZipWhip. And what ZipWhip did was they took the, the local number for the dealership, uh, not the, the paid line or the who's calling line, but just the local number, and they would use that as a text number. Their technology let you send text and receive text through that number. And if a, dealer, a customer happened to hit the callback, uh, it would actually go to the dealership. So it was all legit, it was all really nice. It was a beautiful little program. And as why we're, we, I was building the, the sales team and with using the Zip Whip, I thought to myself, one of my friends is, is a service advisor, and I thought, you know, this would probably really be beneficial to a service advisor as well. It would probably cut through all the, the voicemails and the hassles of going back and forth, calling, trying to get authorization. Starting in the car business as a, as a tune-up tech 30 years ago, I remembered what it was like to, to pull apart a vehicle, go to the parts department, get a quote for the part, make sure it was in stock, walk up to the service advisor, have to wait for him to finish up, tell him what the vehicle needed, have him wait, you know, call the customer. Most of the time, I had to leave a voicemail. I'd go back to my bay, start something else, and then a couple hours later, the service advisor would come out and say, I got authorization. Now I have to go back to the parts department, get the parts. It was just such a, such a cumbersome way to do things. And I was thinking texting would, would eliminate a lot of that. Sat down with, with my buddy in the service to drive and I showed him how to use the zip whip and lo and behold, he was, he was rocking. He just loved it. Everything was going great. So texting customers isn't something new. It's not something revolutionary. It's simply the way, the way it should be done. Uh, I was at a dealership recently and uh, they started using the, the text in the service drive. Texting is going great. Their RO efficiency psh, through the roof, gross per RO going through the roof. And they're ready to start talking about photo, uh, video-enabled MPI, or multi-point inspections. And uh, the service manager was a little bit hesitant. Uh, he says, you know, I, I don't know if that's going to be really beneficial for us. I, to me, it seems like the technician's going to have to slow down his process to stop and take pictures of it and, you know, send it to the customer. And it just, I don't think that'll work for our customer base. Uh, I don't think they'll be impressed by it. They'll be wowed by it. It's not exciting. And I said, well... A couple of ways we can look at this. Uh, I said, you know, one of the things that I want to do is just kind of, let's table that discussion. Let's just talk about something else. You ever buy anything off of Amazon? He goes, yeah, everybody buys stuff off of Amazon. I go, yeah, me too. I go, this morning, I got a text with a picture of an envelope 
on my front porch. He goes, yeah, that's, I get those all the time too. I go, yeah, in that envelope is a $6 bottle of vitamins. $6 bottle of vitamins, I got a picture letting me know it's been delivered. I go, you ever use uh, an app on your phone to order a pizza? Well, sure, everybody, everybody does, right? I can go online, order my pizza, pay for it, and I watch the little graph as it goes from being rolled out to going through the oven, getting cooked, having the toppings put on it, put in a box, and I, and I watch it gets put into a car, and I can see as it's driving to my house, so I know when he's ready to, to get to my house with a $15 pizza. I said, customers aren't necessarily excited about you using technology, they expect it. It's the minimum buy-in to sit at the table with today's customers. You either sit at the table and, and engage with them, or you're on the menu, right? That's the saying, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. So the choice is yours, where do you wanna be? I said, back when I was a technician, I had to stop. Once I diagnosed the problem, go to the parts department with the part number, make sure we had it in stock, get the quote, go to the service advisor. I said, now the customer, the, the technician, let's say it needs brakes. He says, oh, this vehicle needs brakes. He's able to take a video of the brake pad with the indicator next to it. Folks, this is what you're looking at. This is a very unsafe situation while your vehicle's here. We can get these brakes replaced and meet your uh, estimated delivery time of five o'clock this afternoon. He sends that over to the parts department. The parts department puts the price quote, makes sure that they have the parts in stock. He sends it to the service advisor. Service advisor sends it in a text and he's working. He's still out in the drive with another customer or following up on the last repair. The customer gets the text, they open it up, they see the video. Yeah, I definitely need those. It's not something that they're taking somebody else's word for it or something that they're, well, maybe I don't need it. I can, I can go home and uh, see if there's uh, a cheaper way to do it, maybe at the local JP Lube or something. They see that it's dangerous to drive with those on there. They see that it can get done. They see how much it is. They can even pay for it right there. There's just so much that's accepted or expected, I should say, that it, it, it doesn't seem like it's a, a, a thought that dealerships should be having. Right now, if I was running a service drive, I can't imagine running business without these tools, this technology. I just can't see how dealerships are making it because customers are just like you and me. Customers are texting, customers are watching videos, customers are sending videos, customers are on TikTok all day. They're used to bits of information in short bites. Why not give them the information on the platforms they're already used to in a manner that they're already used to, to show that they're, they're important, that you recognize what they're doing. Not all customers are gonna respond to it. That's okay. I assure you, the majority will. So all I'm saying, guys, is technology, it's not an option, it's the buy-in. If you wanna play, if you wanna sit at the table, you gotta be using the features that customers are already using all day, every day. And how do I know that? Because you and I are. They're not any different than you and I. Our customers are not just this separate group of people out there in the world operating on their own. They are you, they are me, they're doing the things that we're doing. So let's just jump in, make it easy for them, watch your gross increase, watch your RO uh, efficiency increase, Everybody's happy, everybody's enjoying things. I'm Mark the Car Guy. If you want to talk about technology in the service drive, reach out to me, please. Till then, stay safe, have an awesome day.